If you've been recording and editing videos, you've probably heard of LUTs. And they're awesome because they can make your footage look, well, this is going to be really subtle, so pay close attention. They can make your footage look like this. Or if your footage looks like this, it can take it all the way to that. And again, here's the, here's the subtle one. We can even go from there back to here. But if you've used them, I'm sure you've also had this happen where they, they come on way too strong and yeah, no bueno. Get out of here, you. LUTs can be a bit confusing, but by the end of this video, you'll know what they are and exactly how to use them to make your footage look cinematic, crispy, all of the above. And y'all have been asking about when the new LUTs are coming out, when they're finally going to be available, the ones that you've been seeing in all my recent YouTube videos. And that answer is they're officially available right now and you can check out those LUTs link down below all the details you need to know along with a big old a big old discount code Okay, so there are two types of LUTs. The first one is a conversion LUT, and the second one, I don't know if this is the technical term, but it's a stylized LUT. Oh, and what does LUT even stand for in the first place? It's just an abbreviation for look up table. It's a file that when you apply it to your video footage, it's going to change the colors and tones depending upon how the LUT was created. Anyways, a conversion LUT is going to take log footage and quickly convert it over to a more standard look. I strongly recommend using your camera manufacturer's official conversion LUTs. You can find them on their website. If you're using log footage, I use Sony's S-Log3 to Rec. 709 conversion LUT and I think it works great. So the goal of a conversion LUT is to get our log footage from this simply back to looking more standard. But if you don't record in log, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can simply, if you're recording in a standard standard profile, so just a non-log picture profile in your camera, that's totally fine. You can skip all that and just move right into using a stylized LUT on top of your footage to change how the colors and tones are going to look and feel. And that stylized LUT is where we're going to spend the majority of our time today as I jump into the computer, take a look at some footage and show you exactly some things that I'm thinking about and ways to make stylized LUTs work for your clips so they don't come on too strong and so that they look really good. I'll be using my brand new LUTs today to do that. But you can do everything I'm about to show you with any LUT of your choice. I'm partial to mine because I spent a lot of time on them and absolutely love them. But you can use whichever LUTs that you like. We're going to be in Premiere Pro today, but the things I'm going to be showing you and talking through are going to be available in whatever editing software that you're using. Okay, so as we get into the steps here, thinking about what to do with the LUTs in post to make sure that they actually look good. The first thing I wanna just run through really quickly is converting log footage using a LUT over to a more standard profile. If you don't record in log, you don't have to worry about this and we'll get to the fun like stylized LUTs in like two seconds. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the clip under my basic correction panel. So not under something like creative, which allows you to change the intensity which is gonna be really important with the stylized LUTs. But under this basic correction panel, I'm gonna use this input LUT here. I'm gonna browse and it's gonna look on my computer. I have this Sony official S-Log3, which if you're curious, 
Um, this is where that lives. I just downloaded directly. I'll put this link down in the description if you're curious about it. But I just download these Sony picture profile conversions from S Log 3, specifically this one, um, over to Rec 709. And once that is there, I have it downloaded and saved somewhere on my computer. I'm always going to remember it's there. I'm just going to apply that. And now my log footage has gone from log using a conversion LUT over to a standard Rec 709. If you're not recording in log, your footage already probably looks like this. Okay, so that is conversion LUTs. Now, one thing that I do do is when I'm actually doing like stylized LUTs, I'm going to be using a adjustment layer, which let me just grab one of these here. I'm going to be using an adjustment layer on top of my footage. Let me just jump back into my color panel. I'm going to use the adjustment layer to actually add a stylized look. If it's log i'm going to be converting that on the actual on top of the actual clip over to rec 709 everything else that i do is going to be on the adjustment layer okay so we have the adjustment layer selected here and then you would think that i want to apply my lut via this input lut would make sense I'm not going to apply my LUT there. A stylized LUT, I'm going to go to this creative panel. And from there, I'm going to browse. And if you've saved your LUTs in a place that you can always find them, I can't recommend that enough. That's where this comes in handy. The essential LUT from my recent LUT pack, this one works fantastic for the studio. It's really subtle. Uh, it's going to add some blue tones, maintain the skin tones, and lift the shadows just a touch. The reason I like putting the stylized LUTs on in this creative panels, I have this intensity slider. This is huge for LUTs. If you have an issue where your LUTs are coming on, and this LUT is so subtle, let me do a, a better example here. Not that I would probably, maybe I might use the crisp LUT for this one, but contrasty. If And I would say this is coming on way too strong. You can back it off pretty easily. So a little before and after, this is a really subtle LUT for the studio, probably not one that I would use, but it does show if your LUTs are coming on way too strong, like we talked about earlier on this intensity slider, you just back them off a little bit. Usually around 30% tends to work pretty good. And then you'll like how that result looks where it's not coming on way too spicy, just a little bit of spice. Okay. But for this actual shot, this studio shot, I use my essential LUT. 100% of the time in all my videos and it actually works really good at 100%. Maybe even sometimes I push it a little bit further. So my studio stuff, this essential LUT is key. I'm going to keep it right there at 100, maybe just up a touch. So the first thing you want to do with stylized LUTs is play with the intensity and see what you like. And for me, I think this one looks really good at about 112. So that's off and that's on. It's adding some blues, maintaining the skin tone and doing a little bit of a shadow lift. Next thing I do when I'm doing stylized LUTs is I will play with the exposure. If your LUTs aren't looking good, one of these next two things is going to make a big difference in how they look. You can play with the exposure to brighten it up or darken it down a bit. It's going to be minor, small adjustments. This image is exposed really well. I don't have to worry about that. The other slider is contrast. A lot of times when you apply a LUT, and again, after you play with the intensity first, then you can play with exposure slightly. And then if it, for this LUT, for example, here's it coming in without any adjustments here. If you don't like how the shadows like are looking kind of lifted, you can just add some contrast and those shadows will no longer be lifted. And that works for any LUT that you're using that has like a shadow lift, just a touch of contrast is going to get rid of that shadow lift, but I actually kind of like how it looks kind of matted. So I would leave that one completely alone. And then for this shot, again, back here in the creative panel, let's go ahead and we're going to apply the, the pike LUT looks exceptional on this clip. And we have our slider here. I want to bring that back down to hundred. It was kind of creeping up here at 113. I think it looks really good right at hundred. You might pull back just a touch and you can see like before and after, we're just playing with those tones, adding some nice aquas. Um, but I think it actually looks good at 100. And then same idea, back here under the, the basic panel, we can either play with our exposure. This is going to really change how the LUT is actually interacting with the footage. If you're not liking what it looks like, again, this can go a really long way. Play with our exposure. Maybe we play with the contrast a little bit. For this type of clip, I might have even bump the contrast a touch. I think it looks pretty good. And I would say that this one here, quick before and after, and on this actual LUT before and after, I think this clip looks fantastic. 
This one would probably also look good uh, with the crisp blood. Let me just see what that one's doing here. So on this crisp blood here, it's kind of more of just a natural look to it. So off and on. This one's not doing a ton. Definitely pushing the contrast a little too far there. Uh, it's not doing a ton, you know, so I might, if I wanted a really subtle like landscape look, this crisp one does really well. So off and on, very subtle, but really natural looking landscapes. I like that a lot too. And we got this rock climbing shot, which this one, there's two LUTs that I think would work well here. Uh, the first one is absolutely the deception one. It's a really warm kind of deserty look to it pretty much done. I don't have to do anything else to that clip. I mean, if you don't like how warm it is, you can pull it back a touch, but I think that warmth on that one looks looks fantastic. And again, if you want to play with your exposure a little bit, it's going to change the LUT a lot and then maybe your contrast, but I'm pretty happy with how that one looks. These look a little bit purple to me and I might just take a touch of purple out by adding some of the green in. Uh, but you can see back on this creative tab, the before, it's a good looking shot. It's a standard shot. It's exposed well, so it's going to look good. But when you apply that warm look to it, changing some of the aquas and some of the blues while maintaining skin tones, it's a huge deal with all of my LUTs. I want to maintain skin tones even when we warm it up and cool it down. I think that looks pretty cool. And then for this clip, this one is very simple for me. The main reason I shot this clip is I knew I wanted to apply my crisp LUT to it. This is like that landscape, outdoor, very clean look, playing with the greens a little bit. But if you can see like the before and after, there's not a ton in it, but I think it looks so good for those natural kind of like outdoor landscapey shots. Same idea back here. You might play with the exposure. I think this one needs to actually come up like a touch. And then if you want those really deep blacks, I might push the contrast slightly and you can see what that's doing. Nice, like kind of clean, higher highlights, really just kind of like a shiny look to it. I absolutely like love this, this lot. So there's uh, off and then turning it back on. So really subtle changes go a long way. And maybe on the intensity again, and you know, you can play with that too. Again, with how hard this one's coming in. A lot of my LUTs are really subtle. So I think at hundred percent, they still work really well. And the last clip here, uh, this one just like, it screams black and white to me. You know, so on this space LUT, it's like a low contrast black and white. And then back over here, and you don't want to play with the intensity of a black and white LUT because that's just going to look really desaturated and weird and leave that one at 100%. And then we're just going to play with the exposure again. I can't emphasize this enough, whether you're using my LUTs or anybody else's, like these stylized LUTs, your exposure being played with slightly and your contrast is going to go a really long way in how those are looking. And you want to play with both directions on those to get a look ultimately that you like. I built this LUT, so I don't want to change any of that. I like the low contrast piece on this one. And I think that that one looks really good for a black and white look. Right before I share with you the two things that are going to make or break how good your LUTs look, if you're getting something from this video, let me know by heading down and giving it a tap on the thumbs up. And while you're down there, if if you don't want to miss videos that are specifically geared to the beginner, videographer, photographer, anybody who wants to use their camera and get better with it, make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss those. And if you decide to pick up my most recent LUTs, I know you're going to love them and I appreciate you more than you know. There is a limited time, significant discount code down there in the details to help you out if you decide to pick them up. This channel is really special to me and I'm genuinely appreciative of every single one of you who helped to support it. Anyways, to maximize how good your LUTs are going to be and how happy you're going to be with your footage, there's two things you have to get right in camera. Those two things being exposure and white balance, and they're absolute game changers when you get them right in camera for how good your footage is going to look. The good news, I have two very incredibly detailed guides on both of those topics that you can check out right there. Which one are you going to watch first? Exposure? White balance? It's up to you. Anyways, if you don't like how your footage is looking, once you get it into post and apply some LUTs, one of those two things, if not both of them, is probably the reason why. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. See ya.